Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Data Mining Modeling Using R. So in the previous lecture, uh, we were uh, discussing multiple linear regression and specifically uh, we started our discussion on exhaustive, uh, exhaustive search. So there are uh, many uh, regression based search uh, algorithms uh, that could be used uh, to reduce the dimension or for variable selections as we have been discussing in the previous uh, lecture as well. So, uh, let us uh, start our discussion with exhaustive search. So, exhaustive search is about uh, when we try all possible combinations of predictors. So, we are looking to examine uh, each uh, uh, possible each possible combination of predictors and check uh, you know compare their performances and find out the best uh, subset from uh, those possible combinations. So, essentially we are dealing with large number of subsets. So, uh, there are uh, different criteria to compare uh, models, subset models. So, uh, the criteria uh, two of them are same as we do uh, for any regression model R square and adjusted R square. So, uh, first uh, you know let us discuss adjusted R square before we proceed. So, adjusted R square can be uh, defined uh, using this particular formula, this particular expression 1 minus n minus 1 divided by n minus p minus 1, where p is the number of predictors, n is the number of observation multiplied by 1 minus R square that is the multiple R square. So, uh, where R square is a proportion of explained variability in the model. So, R square is something that we have been using and uh, we will discuss a bit more on R square as well. R square is also called coefficient of determination and mainly used uh, in statistical modeling where we are generally looking for goodness of foot measures. So, therefore, we are trying to un understand how much of the variability is being explained by the model and R square being the metric for the same. Now, adjusted R square uh, in a way we can say the improved version of R square and uh, where we actually account for the uh, degrees of freedom in a sense the uh, number of predictors. So, uh, R is adjusted R square uh, generally includes a penalty for number of predictors thereby you would see that uh, adjusted R square's value is uh, always slightly less than uh, the corresponding uh, R square value. So, that is mainly because of the penalty that has been added uh, due to the number of predictors. So, more the predictors, uh, more the penalty and that has to be uh, accounted for. So, you can look at the R square's uh, definition or formula as well. R square can be uh, computed at fo as following 1 minus SSE divided by SST that is SSE is uh, 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 sum of squared uh, deviations of er sum of squares of errors and SST is uh, total sum of squares. Uh, you can also express this in the following uh, form as well 1 minus uh, summation over i 1 to n number of observation and then y i that is the actual value uh, minus the predicted value that is y i cap y i hat and then uh, you can divide this uh, particular numerator by uh, summation over 1 i i equal to 1 to n and then within the parenthesis uh, you can have the actual value y i minus divided by the mean of uh, this particular y. So, in this fashion also you can uh, compute R square value. Now, R square is called uh, as we discussed coefficient of determination and mainly used to check the goodness of fit. So, let us move further. Now, uh, R square another way to understand R square is that uh, it would be equal to a squared correlation in a single predictor model. So, we just had a single predictor, we just had a y and uh, that is uh, being regressed uh, on x 1. So, if we just had y and x 1 and we are looking uh, for a linear regression model uh, for the same, then uh, the uh, R square would be a squared correlation uh, that being the single predictor case and that is how R square also gets its name. So, uh, in that case uh, the correlation coefficient generally is expressed uh, uh, using a small r and uh, if, we, if we square that R square, uh, so that is how in a single predictor case R square gets its name coefficient of determination. Now, as, we, as I discussed adjusted R square introduces a penalty on the number of predictors uh, to uh, trade off between 
artificial increase versus amount of information. So that this is the trade-off uh, that is generally uh, incorporated in uh, adjusted R square value. So if there are more number of predictors and they are uncorrelated to the outcome variable, uh, thereby uh, they would just uh, artificially increasing, they would just be artificially increasing the R square value and would not be contributing much to the model in terms of amount of information. So uh, the R adjusted R square will consider this uh, trade-off and will uh, impose a penalty for the same. So we do not want uh, artificial increase in R square. Right. So, we want uh, some amount of information, some contribution uh, coming from those predictors information to the model in terms of explaining the uh, variability, increase in the variability that is uh, in the outcome variable that is being explained by the model. So, uh, if we look at a uh, few more things for example, high adjusted R square values. So, that would also mean that we will, will get a low uh, uh, sigma square, low sigma hat square. So, uh, that is also, so we are eventually we will get uh, low variance. So, high adjusted R square values uh, that would also indicate this. Now, another criteria to compare model, models that could be used in exhaustive research is Mallow CP. Uh, Mallow CP is can be uh, expressed in this form CP uh, uh, SSR that is uh, sum of squares uh, for uh, uh, sum of a square for uh, regression and then uh, divided by this uh, sigma uh, for full model, sigma hat full model square then uh, twice uh, p plus 1 minus n. So, this being the uh, how we compute mellow CP. Now, sigma uh, f uh, hat square is estimated value of uh, sigma square in the full model and SSR is as expressed here is the uh, y hat the predicted value minus uh, that mean value of y. So, that is the sum of squares for regression. So, this is uh, what we have. So, Mallow CP can also be used to compare models. How it can be used, we will just discuss. So, one assumption that you can see in uh, Mallow CP is that uh, full model, uh, uh, assumption is that full model with all predictors is, is unbiased. So, that is the assumption that we make full model with all predictors. So, that is how we start when we are talking about exhaustive research. So, we would uh, we would also be because we are uh, would be exploring all possible combination of uh, combinations of predictors. So, therefore, uh, this would also full model would also be considered. So, uh, assumption is that full model with all predictors is unbiased right. So, uh, that is uh, then uh, uh, that would also mean that uh, predictors elimination would reduce the variability. So, if we eliminate predictors, so that is going to reduce the variability and that is the uh, desirable thing for us. So, uh, how do we find out uh, using this particular criterion, uh, how do we find out uh, the best uh, uh, subset model? So, best subset model would have CP uh, closer to uh, P plus 1 value and p would be a small value. So, cp value that we compute uh, using the formula that we just uh, saw in the previous slide. So, it would be closer to p plus 1 and uh, the p would be a small value. So, using these two uh, uh, using these two criterias, criteria we can actually find out the best subset model. Now, uh, another uh, a fact uh, another important point related to Mallow CP is that it requires high n value more number of observation for the training uh, partition related to P. So, depending on the number of variable because we would be considered considering all possible combinations. So, though therefore, uh, with respect to P uh, we would be requiring more number of uh, uh, observations uh, in the training partitions. Now, let us open our studio and uh, we will understand these concepts through an exercise. So, as usual let us uh, load this particular library, the data set that again we are using used cars data set, let us import this. So, this is the file, let us import, you can see 79 observation of 11 variables in the environment section and now let us remove any columns and let us look at the first 6 observation, we are already familiar with this particular data set. So, again you can see brand model manufacturing year, fuel type, SR price, KM, 
price being the outcome variable of interest and others being the predictors transmission owners airbag and c price so right now we are not interested in c price so uh, that would also be removed so uh, first thing that we will do is compute this particular variable age uh, using manufacturing here column and that's uh, append uh, this to data frame let's take a backup and then uh, we would be getting rid of uh, first three variables uh, which are not of interest to us and the another one c underscore price as well so uh, now we can look at the structure of this particular data frame you can see that 79 observation of eight variables now and all the variables uh, of interest here are in this uh, data frame now because transmission is also a categorical variable automatic or manual the two variables are using uh, you know coded uh, using numeric codes so let's also convert uh, this into a factor variable using this particular code now let's uh, also uh, uh, after this let's also plot this uh, km versus price scatter plot you would see now from this uh, particular uh, plot you can see there are few outliers very clear outliers so majority of the majority of the values they are lying in this particular zone right uh, between 0 to 20 on y axis and uh, uh, and uh, somewhere between 0 to 100, uh, 20, 30 in, uh, on x axis. So very sm uh, small part of this particular plot uh, where the values are lying. So other values uh, seem clearly to be outlier values. So let us get rid of them. On uh, y axis direction you can see that uh, values greater than 70. Uh, there was one particular point greater than 70. This is the point SR price having 100 and uh, uh, the price having 72 and uh, then similarly on the x axis that is for the kilometer in the x axis direction we have uh, three values greater than uh, 150 so we can identify uh, those rows as well so you can see what we are trying to identify is the row indexes for all these values so these four outliers we have been able to identify the uh, indices for all of them and uh, once identified we can use the uh, brackets uh, to subset this particular data set so once we execute this code and uh, combination function, combined function, and then we would be left with only 75 observations. You can see from 79 we have dropped to 75 observation of eight variables. Now again we can plot and see how this is uh, the scatter plot has changed between price and kilometer. Now you can see most of the plotting region is being occupied by the points and all the points are close by no outlier seems to be there now as usual we will do the uh, partitioning once partitioning is done so we will uh, directly skip to uh, the part uh, where we can discuss exhaustive search so let us uh, skip to that part so this is uh, the part variable selection and exhaustive search is the first uh, method that we are going to discuss uh, so library leaps is the leaps is the library that we need to uh, load for this uh, particular uh, method exhaustive search and uh, reg subsets uh, uh, so regression based subsets is the function uh, that we would be using so let's uh, load this particular library so this doesn't seem to be installed so let's uh, first, first install this particular package uh, as we have discussed before for installing a particular package you just have to uh, pass it as an argument in the install uh, dot packages function and once you do this uh, and if you have internet connection this will uh, start downloading the required packages and also install them let us uh, reload the library once now that uh, this is installed so it has been loaded now we would be able to use this function as subsets if you are interested in finding more information about this particular function you can go into the help section as subsets and you would be able to find out more information on this functions for model selection so in this case uh, variable selection and few other algorithms uh, are covered for example model selection by exhaustive search forward or backward step wise or sequential replacement so these are the methods that are supported by this particular function 
So in this function as you can see that uh, first we have to express the formula because essentially this is a regression based so a reg regression models would be built. So price is the our, our outcome uh, variable of interest and the uh, dot representing the other predictors uh, in the data set. But uh, as part of the this as just said uh, various combinations of various pairs of combinations of predictors are going to be tried. Data is DF train and uh, other uh, arguments if uh, you can find out from the help section. So we have ap uh, appropriately specified all those arguments. The most important being the method where we have uh, selected exhaustive as the uh, method for our exercise. So once this is done, so we can execute this particular code and model has been made. We can uh, also find out the summary. Now, uh, in the in the in the in the summary output, uh, in the and as we'll see just uh, a bit now, uh, that there are going to be uh, the variables uh, that would be counted uh, using uh, asterisk. Uh, so first, let's let me show you the summary here. So this is the summary result that we have. So in this case, you can see the call and the eight variables and intercept that are there. So you would see in the results we have one subset of each each size up to eight, algorithm is being exhaustive, and uh, for uh, you know one size for one size subset uh, the SR price is selected as you can see asterisk indicating that SR price is selected. We'll discuss uh, more of the results uh, once we get uh, produce and the output in the uh, suitable format for us to analyze. So let us do that. So uh, these asterisk this function that I have written in the next line uh, count a special character this function is going to count the uh, instances of asterisk in a particular row or column right. So let us uh, create this function. Now uh, this function will be using to for counting uh, uh, for these as you can see the in the summary output that we just saw for a particular column we would be counting uh, these asterisks. Uh, so that uh, this counting will help us uh, reorder uh, the columns of uh, this particular matrix. So this being the matrix, we would like to reorder the columns. Probably SR price we would like to see first because SR price seems to be present in all eight models. So therefore, and then followed by the next uh, uh, next variable, next column, which comes in uh, more rows, right? Which appears in more rows. So therefore, we would like to order in that in that sense, and for that. Uh, we need to find, uh, count the asterisk uh, as part of the computation. Uh, this particular uh, this particular outmat uh, would actually have this uh, output matrix. So we are trying to uh, count uh, the this apply function. You are already familiar. The second argument to uh, second argument value of two indicating that uh, uh, we are going to apply this function on a column wise, and therefore we'll get the numbers of asterisk uh, for each column. So let us compute this. You can see these numbers. Now these numbers are going to be passed on uh, to passed on as argument to uh, to this matrix itself when we construct a data frame for our output. You can see ordered by here. You can see ordered by minus OM which we have just computed. So uh, the uh, uh, count the particular column having the most number of asterisk. Uh, we want it to uh, appear first and then followed by the uh, next column having more number of asterisk. So that is why this arrangement this has been done. Now in the data frame you would see the first column is uh, number of coefficients. So for each model we want to see number of coefficients that are there. So that can be again computed uh, using uh, this uh, asterisk uh, right. So this does not count the intercept term. So intercept is another uh, that could be there. So we are not counting it. So uh, again you can see in the apply function now we are counting row wise. The second argument the apply function is 1. So therefore we are counting row wise. Then uh, we have uh, this RSS which is residual sum of squares. Uh, so this is again in the output itself. So we would be using this then the CP values that we have 
uh, we want to see we want to we are interested in just the value uh, up to uh, two decimal points similarly r square and adjust square adjust r square so the three uh, criteria uh, that we have uh, to compare different subset models uh, models are three rather four criteria is rss residual sum of square then mellow cp then r square and then adjust r square so we would be using these statistics these criteria to compare different uh, subset models last one uh, last uh, particular uh, variable vector would uh, is it's actually a matrix would actually indicating the, the presence of uh, presence of or absence of uh, different variables in the particular model so let's compute this Let's look at the loud output. So you can see RSS value for all eight models. So uh, the first model is having uh, uh, one coefficient or uh, one variable, then the second model two variables, three var uh, variables, and in this fashion up to eight variables that are there. Now you would see though we had uh, eight variables, uh, uh, there is was one categorical variable, so we had two dummy variables for the same. So therefore, we had uh, though we had seven variables, it, it is showing as, as eight, just like the regression output, where we had uh, two variables representing uh, fuel type, right? Fuel type diesel and petrol. So uh, RSS uh, values are there, that is residual sum of square, and CP values are there, R square and adjusted R square value are there. If we focus first on adjusted R square value, you can see starting from one variable model to two variable model, the R square value keeps increasing. Right, keeps increasing and when we reach to uh, uh, four variable model that is uh, this fourth row right when we reach to this particular row four variable model the r square value has uh, peaked at point value of 0.72 and after that as we include more uh, variables uh, five variable model six variable model you would see that uh, the r square adjusted r square value is decreasing right so that is because the uh, as we discussed before that adjusted r square it uh, imposes and penalty on uh, number of predictors so therefore uh, because of that so there is not uh, that that the quantum increase in r square value and the uh, with respect to further increase in number of predictors is not uh, Good enough, and that is why the penalty has been imposed, and adjust the R square value is uh, then uh, decreases after that, after four variable model. But if you look at the R square uh, column, you would see that uh, these value keeps uh, R square value keeps on increasing, and uh, four variable uh, model it reaches its peak that is 0.74, and then uh, it uh, increases to 0.75, and uh, for uh, more uh, you know if we add more uh, variable model we look at more six seven eight variable model and then there also the value remains at same 0.75 so maybe it is increasing uh, you know after two decimal points or three four fifth decimal point we might see some increase so essentially we can say r square value keeps on increasing so even though the predictor information might not be useful for, for the model in terms of contributing the uh, you know uh, contributing as you know amount of information but uh, the uncorrelated even though the information uh, even though the predictor might not be contributing in terms of information but r square value keeps on increasing right so uh, if we look at the adjusted r square value probably the four variable model four variable subset that is the one that we would like to select Similarly, if we look at the mellow CP, so as we discussed, uh, the CP value uh, closer to P plus 1 and also we can lo have a look at the uh, lower P value. So if we uh, look at uh, this uh, and specifically if we start at uh, the three variable model, uh, you can see 1.73 and P value is uh, at this point is 3. So uh, 3 plus 1 that is 4. So 1.73 is uh, uh, and the, the difference is uh, from slightly more gap between 1.73 value and 4. If we look at the next value four variable model you can, you can see 1.99 that is about 2 and the number of variables now are 4 plus 1, 5 so that gap is 3 here and uh, the earlier gap is, was uh, for three variable model 1.73, 2 or uh, 4. Uh, so that was uh, about uh, two point something. So three variable model, four variable model. So these are the models. Uh, uh, then if you look at the five variable model for mellow CP, 
the value increases to 3.21 now 3.21 and the p value is 5 so that makes it 6 so this is also so 5 variable model is also the 3 4 5 they both uh, are in the, the the cap is similar right if we move further then the uh, c uh, malo cp value is 5.03 and uh, the p value is 6 so there, there, there that is comes out to be 6 plus 1 7 so even uh, less than value but uh, as we discussed that we are interested in low p value right so if we look at the uh, c uh, low cp then probably we'll uh, will select the three variable model right because uh, the difference is 1.73 and difference between 1.73 and 4 uh, that is uh, 2 point about 2.27 and but the value of uh, p is low that is 3 but if we compare it to the uh, 5 variable model or let's say 6 variable model so in this case uh, 6 variable model let's say 5 uh, and that, that difference is 7 the difference is less but it, it is higher p value 5 variable model 3.21 and uh, it uh, p value is 5 so 5 plus 1 6 so the difference is still two point more than that. So therefore, one uh, the four variable model there also the difference is more than that. Then probably using the uh, CP value we look at it. Then three variable model would uh, be selected. Uh, looking at the adjusted R square value, the uh, four variable model would be selected. And uh, looking at the uh, R square value, uh, five variable model would be selected because that is the highest R square that we can have and after that uh, we just keep on giving if we just look at the two decimal points so after that it's just the number of variables keeps added and uh, the uh, r square value is increasing after two decimal points the third fourth decimal point there might be some increase now we look at the uh, variables that are included in uh, in these models you can see the first column and that is why we had ordered uh, this particular matrix uh, in terms of the number of asterisks that are present because you, uh, immediately we can identify that SR price being the most important variable uh, in a sense that it is appearing in all eight models uh, followed closely by age which is also appearing in uh, seven of these models then fuel type patrol which is appearing in five of these uh, six of these models then kilometer which is appearing in five of these models right so in that sense we can generate this uh, you know in a way importance of uh, we can also understand the importance of variables that SR price appearing in all the models definitely it's more, most important which is also expected that uh, because we are trying to predict the used price of a car and the showroom price being the, uh, the main indicator it's not surprising but uh, let me also tell you as I have indicated before that this particular analysis that we are doing is based on just 75 observation very small data set uh, therefore there is uh, it is subject to the results are subject to change uh, uh, to partitioning that we are doing so every time when we do uh, partitioning and when we change it the results might change uh, uh, significantly so therefore uh, if we do uh, this same exercise using a much larger data set then probably even if they repeat the exercise the results won't change to that extent right now if we are interested uh, in few more information for example coefficient of subset models uh, for example uh, second uh, there is this coefficient function uh, where it is going to give us the coefficient value for a uh, different uh, subset models that we have just computed eight models so the second argument is actually indexed for the same the output that we saw in the uh, summary and otherwise the data frame that we constructed so uh, one to eight eight uh, models are there so let's uh, look at the coefficient values so let's start from the first so you can see the first model when we uh, look at the one variable model then the model is actually uh, based on sr price the one predictor that is there is sr price coefficient value we can also have 0 0.246 uh, and then we, if we look at two variable models then sr price and age are there as we move forward uh, then fuel type patrol sr price and age are there and then fuel type patrol sr price km and age and uh, as we move further uh, the five variable model then we see that uh, owners is also there and then six uh, variable model and uh, then uh, now uh, uh, so few uh, one airbag has also appeared now so in this fashion you can see uh, the coefficient value and which variables 
depending on the variable model uh, the that uh, uh, whether it's five variable model four four variable model six variable model it will be uh, uh, recall the uh, results that uh, the r square adjusted r square value using adjusted r square value uh, we zeroed on four variable model if we look at the that uh, we uh, take adjusted r square as the primary criteria for our exercise then uh, four variable model we can see the variables that are there uh, the fuel type retool sr price km and age so probably these are the important variables which are contributing to some extent and which is reflected uh, in this for example showroom price is definitely important for uh, predicting uh, price of a you know a used car kilometer accumulated is also important uh, you can see uh, you can also see that this is negatively uh, negatively correlated here and then you can look at the age also which is also negatively and rightly negat uh, correlated so that is also there you can also see that fuel type petrol is also negatively uh, correlated which is also true in the sense that diesel cars they are uh, slightly uh, you know they carry more price the, the showroom at uh, you know when first purchase at the time of first purchase they carry more price and even for used cars it is the uh, you know uh, even uh, this per at, as per this data uh, this uh, petrol is uh, negatively so uh, diesel or, or CNG with respect to uh, because this reference is CNG so with respect to the CNG uh, petrol is negatively priced so uh, with this decision we will stop here and uh, in the uh, next, uh, next lecture we will discuss uh, some of uh, partial iterative uh, search algorithms uh, for variable selection thank you